Hello, I'm Meredith and I'm a Makerspace Mentor in the Hub at the Grays Lake Area Public Library. Thank you for joining for another Art with Flair program in which we will be painting Camping at the Lake. This is another design from the socialartworking.com website, which I found to be a great resource. Today's painting uses uh, one technique that's called a wash. Um, basically, after you trace the pattern onto the canvas, we'll be covering the canvas with water and then painting over that water so that it has more of a watercolor effect. And then we'll be letting that dry before we go on to the next steps of the painting. I'm looking forward to painting this with you and um, let's move on to the supplies that you'll need. All right, here we have our supplies for this month's painting. We have our paint here. We'll need eight different colors for this picture. We need bright red, chrome yellow, chrome orange, cobalt blue, Mars black, phthalo red, titanium white, and ultramarine blue. Then I have my canvas, my piece of carbon paper, and my pattern sheet along with a pencil to trace the pattern. I have a variety of paint brushes, paper towels, a couple of glasses of water for rinsing brushes, and my palette, and a paper plate underneath to help me with mixing if I need to mix any um, colors together. And then my picture with the step-by-step -step instructions and it looks like we're ready to start. We're ready to do the, the beginning here, uh, which is tracing the pattern onto our canvas, which if you've uh, done this with me before, you will remember. So I placed the carbon paper on my canvas. You can see the, car the carbon is not as big as the canvas, so I'll be needing to move that to be able to trace the entire pattern. But what I want to do is line up the, ed the corners of the pattern with my canvas. Carbon paper is underneath and then I just start tracing the elements that I see here on the, on the pattern. It doesn't have to be exact and if you see elements in the pattern that you don't really want to have in your painting, you don't need to trace them. Make this painting your own, make it unique. So for instance, if you didn't want, um, if you didn't want the campers there, just leave them out. I'll let you get to your tracing and I will see you back here when it's time for step one. All right, we have our pattern all traced onto the canvas now. It's time to start with step one. Um, it says lay in the canvas on the horizontal surface and use a brush and clean water to wet the entire canvas. And here's what I mentioned in the introduction uh, this is a technique called a wash. So we're going to get the canvas all wet and then we're going to paint on top of it so that it gives more of a watercolor effect. So I just want to make sure that I get all of the canvas a little bit wet. You should be able to see uh, it's not standing water exactly but should definitely be able to see a fair amount of water on the canvas. Okay. Now I take a um, three quarter inch flat brush. I have my chrome orange, phthalo red, ultramarine blue and cobalt blue right here. I use the chrome orange first and it says to paint 
long single stroke above and below the horizon line. So you see how that's spreading it and then one below. Okay. And then the next color is Thalo Red. It says use the same brush. It doesn't say rinse it or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just dip the same brush in. And then I'm going to do the Thalo Red above the orange and below the orange. And you see how because of the water on the canvas, they're just the kind of spreading and blending. All right, then it says allow the water to mix the paints. So then I repeat with ultramarine blue above the pink or the phthalo red here. And below. And then continue with cobalt blue. Okay, and then it says while the paint is still wet, I'm going to use a brush to drip clean water onto the canvas for texture. So, actually, let me finish. Let me finish with the cobalt blue. It looks like they continue that all the way up to the top of the page. Actually, let me add a little bit more ultramarine blue here. Make sure I go all the way to the edge of the painting as well, all the way to the edge of the canvas. Okay, I'm just using horizontal strokes. Okay, now I use the brush to drip clean water and it says refer to the photo. So you're trying to create like a constellation look in the sky. And then down here, like it's um like it's reflected in the water as well. And then it says um, to use a paper towel to dab the paint where you drooped it. Yours would probably look different from mine because everybody has different style. I'm just sort of trying to follow what they're doing. I don't know. Looks okay to me. And then we let the painting dry before we move on to the next step. Um, if you don't want to uh, be patient and let it dry, just air dry, you can use a hair dryer on low to help with the drying process. And I will see you back after that. Well, that took a while to dry, even using a hair dryer. But my canvas is finally dry and I'm ready to move on to step two. 
the first bullet point of step two is to use a bright brush to mix titanium white with a small amount of cobalt blue and then paint the moon. So I'll go ahead and mix these up in my palette here. Oops, I have a feeling they want it pretty light. And when you're painting, uh, make sure that you're covering up the carbon paper lines, the, tra the pattern tracing that we did earlier. Because if you don't cover it up with enough paint, it will sh it can shine show through once the paint is dry. Um, and with something like this, you might want to go back and paint it a uh, second coat just to be sure. Just trying to get the nice round shape. Not very good at this freehand, but there we go. Okay, so we rinse the brush. And then the next bullet point says to load a wet toothbrush with titanium white Hold it about four to six inches away from the canvas and pull the, your thumb across the bristles to create stars in the sky. Um, I didn't realize that we we're going to need a toothbrush. And uh, I don't have an old one on hand, although if you do, feel free to use one. But I'm going to improvise with a paintbrush and I think it will achieve the same effect or very similar. So I have here a, a slightly bigger brush. I'm going to make sure it's it's pretty wet. And then I'm going to dip it in the white here. So it's not completely loaded, but it's got a fair amount of paint on it. And then I'm going to hold it a little bit closer because this may speckle all over the place. So be careful. Um, make sure you have something down underneath your canvas or that things around you are protected just in case. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's see if we can get this to work. There, a little bit. Let me go ahead and go back and do it again. Careful it doesn't drip. And just add what you want until you think your sky has enough stars in it. Yeah, that looks good. I don't know if you can see the effect that that had on my painting. Hopefully you can see that. All right, and then a couple stars that went where I didn't want them, I'm just gonna use a damp paper towel and just gently, a little tip, kind of blot them away. Might leave it looking a slightly lighter in the sky at the, in that place, but um, then I don't have stars in the campfire, for instance. Okay, and then the last bullet point of step two says to take a number eight bright brush and titanium white and paint the interior of the tent and the highlights on the moon. So I'm just gonna go ahead 
inside the outline so I can still see the outline of the tent. I'll paint inside here. Like so. And I'll go to finish the tent in a minute and then um, up here it says to refer to the photo for your highlights on the moon. And um, so this is where the picture really helps. So I can see that it has lighter areas around the bottom. Okay, so I'll keep working on this a little bit. You go ahead and you highlight your moon as you prefer and I will see you back here for step three. Um, so I've let my painting dry and I'm ready to start step three. In step three, I take three quarter inch flat brush or whatever brush you prefer to be using and chrome orange and I'm going to go ahead and paint the tent. Uh, I'm going to paint over the white that I just painted in step two. Again, I'm going to make sure that I cover, since the white didn't really cover it, I'm going to make sure I covered the um, carbon lines, the pattern tracing lines, to make sure that um, they're not going to show in the final, when everything is finally painted and dry. And I'm also going to use brush strokes that go, that sort of mimic how the tent is going. So for instance, on the front, I'm using horizontal strokes. And on the side, I'm going to be using, on the front, excuse me, I use vertical strokes. And on the side, I'm using horizontal strokes. So that's done, and now I'm going to use um, a smaller brush and some chrome yellow and a little bit of white. Two parts chrome yellow, which is basically two brushfuls, and then one part white, and I'm going to paint the campfire. And there is no outline for the campfire, so you're going to have to make up where it is yourself. I mean, you can see where the embers are, but the flame itself is not traced. So have fun with that. It says to refer to the photo if you want to know approximately how they have a look. And then rinse the brush, and then use this brush again in some bright red to paint shading on the tent. So I'll bring in my bright red here. Let me add some water to it. And then again, refer to the photo, it says, to know where to put the highlighting on the tent. And then we mix the bright red with a little bit of cobalt blue to do the tent outlines. And that will be the final step to covering up your tracing lines, I believe. So I will see you back for step four. I finished up step three, uh, finished the highlighting on the tent and I figured out that what they meant with the bright red and the highlighting is really they just wanted the tent to look like it had some texture 
So I just added some streaks of red here and I kind of touched up along the edges of the, of the outline just to give it a little bit of texture. And then I went over the outline with the mixture of bright red and cobalt blue and I'm ready to move on to step four. In step four, we're going to paint all of the black silhouettes. So this step is going to take a while. There are some bigger areas, but then there are some very detailed areas. For instance, the tree with the branches and some of the shoreline bushes and the tree, little trees over here on the little island area. Um, so I'm going to take my time. I have a variety of sizes of brushes to use, so I'm going to start with a bigger one, uh, but I'm going to move on to some of these smaller ones and detailed for some of the detailed areas so I can get in the, the little brush strokes and especially like the people and, um, and the sticks that they're using. I want to make sure that I can get those lines uh, as precise as possible but I am gonna take my time. If I make a mistake, I'm not gonna uh, worry about it. I'm just gonna incorporate it into my painting and make this painting unique and my own, which I always encourage you to do as well. So if there's an aspect of this that you don't like, if you don't want the people there in the campfire, if you wanna add more trees or fewer trees or more bushes, whatever you would like to make this your, your painting, uh, please do so. As I said, I'm going to take my time painting all of the black silhouettes on here. I will see you back for step five. Here we are with um, all of our silhouettes. That took a while, uh, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, I went ahead, I kind of did my own tree over here and I I didn't exactly copy what they were doing. I sort of did my own vegetation on the left as well. Um, so now we have moved on to step five. The first uh, bullet point has us adding uh, bright white highlights onto the moon and then painting the reflection on the water. So let's go ahead and, um, and start that. And I'm not exactly sure where the brightest highlights are on the moon. So I'm just going to kind of add some strokes in here. There, just kind of make it look swirly. And then, um, does it really look like the reflection is round exact specifically round so all right so I guess I kind of use back and Fourth strokes to kind of give it that watery reflection look. So I'll try doing that. Okay, it's about as good as I'm going to get. And then using the same brush, mix two parts cobalt blue with one part titanium white and use that mix to paint highlights on all of the silhouette areas. So I think I'm going to end up using smaller brushes as well, but we can start with bigger ones. Let me um, move some cobalt blue over here, so two parts, and then um, some titanium white. So it's going to end up being a, definitely a darker mix than what we used for the moon to begin with. So I'm liking that mix. Maybe a little bit more blue actually.
Okay, and then it looks like we're using it to, you know, sort of add, add some definition to the mountains over here. It looks like snow, a moonlight glow. Just adding the, the look of like peaks and valleys and things like that. And then I'll be doing the same over here with the trees. I'll probably use a smaller brush here, like this over here to sort of add. Most like a reflection on the edges of the trees and things, just to sort of highlight them and to um, give them some depth. And then here as well, on the vegetation over here, I'll just sort of dab some around. Um, some moonlight reflection on the cattails. I use this color to add foreground vegetation here. I tried to do it a little bit with the black, honestly, to kind of give myself an idea, but much more like that. And so when it dries, it, it'll get a little bit darker and it'll just blend in a little bit, but um, but you'll be able to see that foreground stuff. And then again over here on the tree, we'll add like a, almost like a moonlight highlight here on the trunk. To give it more definition. Could try dry brushing some of this uh, which is using a dry brush and just a little bit of paint so that um, it's not really covering the area it's just sort of giving the hint of a different color so I'll try doing this over here I'll do it with the, the leaves and stuff as well um, it doesn't look like the silhouettes of the people have any highlighting on them. So I'll see how that looks after I get all the other areas. But, um, but so that's what they're looking for. And that's what I'm going to be working on here. Well, again, this is going to take a while, I believe. So I will join you in a bit. Again, make the painting yours. Uh, it doesn't have to look like what the picture does. It should be something that you're happy with. I finished, I, I did the moon reflection in the water and I finished my blue highlights uh, to show the moonlight shining on everything and I believe my painting is finished. I did go, go back and kind of I added a little bit of black somewhere and I added a little bit more trees here but I, got, I have it to the point where I'm happy with it. So. I hope that you are satisfied with yours as well. See you in a minute to say goodbye. And that concludes our painting of Camping in the Woods. Thank you very much for joining me for this Art with Flair through the Grays Lake Area Public Library. I enjoyed painting this painting and enjoyed some of the techniques that they had us use, such as the wash, that gave us the watercolor look. I hope that you join me next time for uh, when we paint a picture of hyacinths around a country fence. And this is Meredith from the Hub Makerspace at the Grays Lake Area Public Library saying so long and take care. And I hope to see you next time.